Hello and welcome to the 84th video in this series program of Chess Engine in C. So in this video we're going to implement the null move and we're going to start that by putting two functions make and take null move into the make move.c. Now these will go relatively quickly because they're extremely similar to make and take move except they don't actually move anything on the board, we're simply switching the side. So I'll just brutally put make null move in like this and then talk through it as ever you have the code available for download. So making an all move, a couple of asserts, particularly that we're not in check, otherwise we've got some problems. We increment the ply and store the key as normal. We essentially do everything we do in make move, but we're not making a move. So the en passant hashing, the storing in the history array of our conditions, and switching of the side, hashing of the side, incrementing the history ply, and checking the board. And that's all we need to do for making a null move. There's nothing else. And likewise, for taking a null move, it's exactly the same kind of situation. We take our null move by simply decrementing the ply, the history ply, hashing our en passants, setting our castling permission 50 move and en passants and everything back, and changing the side. So I've gone very quickly through that because there's really nothing to nothing different or new in this. It's exactly identical to make move but we're not moving any pieces. Key thing is we're just switching the side. So I'm going to take both these definitions here now and just quickly put these into defs.h and where are we? We're in make move. Oh, they're already in defs.h. Okay, I've forgotten that I got them in. Okay, and now we need to implement the null move inside the search. And you might have noticed from the last code download that when I'd been preparing about the null move, we actually had the slight preparation here because I've already set the score here to minus infinite and then reset it here to minus infinite. And it's inside this gap here that we're going to put in the null move. So I'll just paste in first of all the conditions that allow a null move to occur and talk through those. First of all, you remember right at the start of our definition of alpha beta when we first defined it, we had this do null. Well, this is where we're actually going to use it. Because we're giving the opponent a free move, it makes no sense to do more than one of these in a row. If we allowed them to happen recursively, so always again and again and again, then we will basically drop into quiescent search every single time because we were just searching reduced depth searches until we just got to quiescent search. So we can't allow two null moves in a row which is why this is set to true when we search normal alpha beta because we're in normal alpha beta here inside our move loop and when we do our null move we'll actually set that to false so the first thing we want to do is say can we do null that means normal alpha beta was called rather than the null move window and we can then do a null move next obviously is are we in check or not if we're in check then we can't do a null move otherwise our king will get captured Here's an important one which caused the search bug a few videos ago. We also here need to make sure we've made at least one move into the search before we do a null move. This is to try and protect against a zugzang, which I said, which is basically do of the currents of our side, do we have at least one big piece on the board so we're not going to be in a potential zugzang position. We still could be, but it'd be very rare. And also is our depth greater than or equal to four because we're going to search at with an R of three, so a depth minus four. So if we should really only be doing a null move at depths greater or equal to greater than or equal to four. Okay, so once we've satisfied all of these conditions here, we can actually go into making the null move itself. And it's not very difficult. We looked at it in quite a bit of detail with the explanation in the last video. We simply make our null move. We then search with our minus beta and minus beta plus one null window, which I explained in the last video. We have our depth minus four, position the info, and here crucially we set false, which means when we drop into alpha beta, we won't make another null move because do null is false. We'll therefore drop through and do a normal alpha beta search. So we don't have two null moves in a row. We then take back the null move. If we're stopped, we just return zero. And otherwise we have a look, as explained in the last video, whether we're still, even though the opponent's had a free move, better than beta. And if we are, then we return beta. So that's all there is to implementing the null move. 
So just to show how that works, I'll just run make and make sure everything makes OK here, and it does. And I've got a position here just to sort of, I quickly found sort of a middle game, well, opening middle game position. I'm just going to copy this FE into the clipboard, and I'm going to take out, copy out the, the null move here, and just make again. And now just close the engine. I can't remember whether I've set the chapter 84 version of Vice up already or not. Just bear with me. No, I haven't. Chapter 84 and Vice, good. And I've also set it to UCI mode so we can analyze here. And I'll just restart the engine. So this is now without null move. If I just hit analyze here, we can see that it's got to depth 7 after 3 million positions here. And I'll leave it running a little bit longer now and see if we get to depth 8 within the next 10 seconds or so. Hopefully we will. No, it's taking a long time to get to depth 8. With probably a tree explosion in there. OK, then I'm going to leave that. So we've got 25... Oh, there we go. So 26 seconds and 21 million positions to depth 8. So if I now close the engine because I want to be able to compile and let's now just put the null move in and save and go to make and now back into arena and let's just run the analysis again on this so we had 26 seconds and 21 million positions at depth 8 and now you can already clearly say see we've hit depth 8 after 4 seconds and 3 million and we've got exactly the same score the 0.37 and 0.42 minus here as well and the same PV. So we've got the same score and result, except after 13 seconds already we've hit depth 9. So in half the time we've gone one play deeper. And let's see by around 26 seconds whether we actually managed to get depth 10 or not. Maybe not because it's a bit close with the 13. No, we haven't. So we've gone up 30 seconds to depth 10. So we've gone almost two play deeper simply for adding in the null move. And at depths 7 and 8 we return the same score I noticed in PV as we did without the null move. So you can already appreciate there what a great advantage null move actually gives us for very little extra code. So I'm now going to run the tournament again for 20 games using uh, TSCP and expect here a rather resounding score because of the extra search tips. So we'll see what happens. And then in the next video we're going to move into introducing the last improvement to our search and maybe also the last improvement for the engine before the end of this series. And that is we're going to introduce a transposition table inside here so that positions that have already been searched before we can store the score and if we've got the same position again and we had an exact score then we can just return this score rather than doing all of this search. And that should gain us another extra play or two. So thanks very much for watching and uh, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.